We call this fly the hula worm. It's a scaled down derivative of a jiggy worm, a popular bass fly. And it only uses three materials other than the hook and the bead, the tail, the legs, and the marabou. And today we're going to tie it in olive. The hook I'm using is a 90 degree jig hook from Mustad in one aught. We begin by placing our cone head on our hook. And this is a large brass cone head, but you can vary the sink rate on this fly by using tungsten or different size cone heads. The thread I'm using is UTC 140 denier in light olive, but you could even use 210 denier for this fly. I want to start my thread toward the rear of the hook and about the hook point is a good place to start and lay down a thread base toward the bend of the hook. Yeah, let's get that cone head out of the way. And then advance our thread back to our starting point. Reach in with our scissors and trim off that tag end. For the tail and the body of the fly, I'm using Hairline's Mop Chenille. And this is the modeled, or you'll sometimes see it referred to as the variegated chenille. And we use about a six inch piece. And mop chenille has a couple of features. One, it's a little bit larger than most chenille. And second, the end doesn't unravel when you cut it like normal chenille would. And we want a tail that's about almost two hook lengths long. So we begin by measuring the first hook length from the bead to the back of the bend of the hook. And then we pull the chenille to measure almost another hook length about to the barb of the hook. And then we transfer that back to our tie-in point where our thread is. And then we take two loose wraps around the chenille with no tension, and then we pull up on our thread to tighten it. Because this material will uh, rotate around the hook shank, so we take four or five more tight turns right on top of each other to hold it in place. And then we pull back on the tag end of our chenille and take four or five more tight turns just in front of the chenille. This just helps keep it from sliding around the hook shank. And then we advance our thread forward on the hook to about a third of the way between the bend of the hook and the hook point or the hook eye and the hook point. And we want to leave plenty of space here so I like to move the cone head back against my thread and ensure that I have about a hook eye of space on that hook shank behind the bend. And this is where we'll stop wrapping our chenille forward. So I'll begin taking my first wrap of chenille, and I like to use that index finger on the opposite side to hold it in place. And then we just make touching wraps all the way forward until we reach our thread point. And then once I reach the thread point, I'll hold the tag end and take a couple of wraps of thread over the top of the chenille and pull that tag end back and take a couple of more wraps in front to secure it. Then reach in with the scissors and trim off the tag end of the chenille. And before we tie in our legs, I'm going to get that cone head out of the way. So I just reach in and kind of push hard and click it over the bend of the hook, and it'll stay out of the way there. The legs I'm using are barred crazy legs in olive and green flake. We're going to pull three legs from the bunch, and I like to fold these in half over my thread and line up those tips. Now this is where it helps to, to leave those legs attached to that bit of silicone at the end to kind of hold everything together. So we pull those legs up and stretch them a bit and then tie them with a few thread wraps right on top of the hook shank. Let's get that thread back on top of the hook shank right in front of our chenille. And we'll give this just a few more wraps to really secure these down on top of the hook shank. And then I rotate the hook in my rotary vise so the point is up. Now to keep those legs out of the way, I'm going to clip them back with a small hair clip, which is really handy for this fly. And we take our next bunch of three legs and again, fold them over the, the thread as we did before. And we're going to tie them in on the bottom of the hook shank, just in front of that chenille, just as we did before with a few thread wraps. And once I get these tied in, I rotate my hook back to the upright position. I'm going to use my hair clip to clip all those legs down toward the rear of the hook. For our final material, we're going to tie in marabou blood quills. Now, blood quills are really nice feathers for palm rim because they have nice, long, wispy fibers 
and the stem is relatively thin, which helps it bend around the, the shank of the hook. You do not want a feather such as this one with scraggly fibers and a really thick stem because that thick stem won't bend around the hook and be very difficult to, to hold on the hook. So this is a, a really nice feather. It has nice long wispy fibers and a relatively thin stem. We're going to tie in by the tip of the feather, so we want a nice tip as well. I'm going to strip all these fibers from the bottom of the feather. I've already stripped those fibers from this blood quill, and this is a really nice one with a nice thin stem. And notice there's a concave side to the feather and a convex side. We want to tie that concave side toward the, uh, the hook shank. So I began by pulling those fibers down to isolate that tip because I want to tie in down at the base of that tip. I don't want to tie in at the very top because it would almost immediately break off. So I pull those fibers back to isolate the tip and then with the concave side pointing toward the hook, I lay it on the hook shank and take a couple of wraps around that feather point. Then I pull the tip of that feather back and do a reverse tie to make sure it doesn't slip out and then advance my thread slightly forward. Our next step is to palmer our marabou around the hook shank and the key to palmering these long wispy fibers is to keep them swept back to the rear as we make each wrap. So we sweep back to the rear and you'll notice they try to wrap over each other underneath. So we pull those out from under, underneath and then we sweep back once more and make another wrap and then pull those from underneath and keep doing that forward until we get to the, to the bare feather. Once we get to that bare stem, we hold it at up at an angle, and then we take a couple of thread wraps over that bare stem, trying to keep those fibers out from under the thread. Take another wrap, and again, they're going to get in the way, but that no worries there. And after a couple of wraps, pull that stem back, and just as we did with the tip, make a couple of wraps over the top of that stem, reverse tying it in, because without these, it's likely to slip out. Reach in with our scissors, cut that stem off, and then we take our whip finish tool and give it a, a good four, five, six turn whip finish over the marabou and behind the cone head and trim that tag end off. And we push up on our cone head and slide it over the bend of the hook back against the marabou. And then we want to restart our thread while holding the cone head back, restart our thread just in front of the cone head. And this is why it's important not to crowd the front of the hook during all these previous steps. We want to make sure we have plenty of room for this thread dam in front of the cone head. So we hold back on the cone head and start making sufficient wraps to hold that cone head in place. And it will take a lot of wraps. This is why we use the 140 denier or even 210 denier thread. So once we have sufficient wraps to hold that cone head in place, we grab our whip finish tool again and give it another four or five turn whip finish just in front of the cone. Trying to keep that whip finish up on top of the hook shank if we can. Trim that tag end off and then let's clean up some of this around the eye. Those marabou feathers really get everywhere. A marabou fiber is a bit too long and, and most feathers would be. We really want the marabou to be about the same length as the hook itself, so along about there is where we'd like to trim our marabou to. So we pull those fibers forward and sometimes it helps just to blow from the back of the fly and uh, blow all those fibers forward. And then we take our thumbnail, we don't use scissors, we take our thumbnail or fingernails and then just pick those feathers off until we get the length we want and that looks about right. Our next step is to trim our legs, and we want to trim them about a half inch shorter than the tail, so we align them with the tail and then slip our scissors in and trim them off about a half inch shorter. Now for our final step, we want to take a lighter and gently run the flame over that chenille. Now, we get, let's get that marabou out of the way. We don't want to burn our marabou. Gently run that flame just back and forth over the chenille and a little bit of a taper and touch it with our fingers and then our fly is finished. We hope you'll give this fly a try. It is a great bass fly.